Hello and welcome into Room 442. James Sharman alongside Michael Singh, who stirred the pot on Thursday, <laughs> having a chat with Sarah, talking about CF Montreal and how they're a really good team, but not a great team. And there's been some, some backlash to, to your comments. Uh, surprise, we, surprise. We love social media in this business. So looking at some of the, the comments on the tweets you, you put out this past uh, couple of days, um, Diego says, this is embarrassing. All right. Let's see, we, uh, Pashel, oh, lots of um, emojis. Pashel has a, a clown emoji okay. um, and, and lots of laughing emojis too. Uh, Matthew has gone with the clown emoji as well. No explanation, just, just emojis. That's what we're doing in 2022, apparently. Uh, Mark Alexander, no emojis, but ha, 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 ha. <laughs> um, which is, I guess, is that better than LOL? I'm, I'm not sure. It, it could be better than LOL. Uh, Eddie Guerrero has, I think, a yawning emoji. So back to the emojis here, all right? So we're getting the full spectrum here of, of hate for you here, Mikey. Uh, oh, there, an LOL. Senor G has, a, has an LOL. Um, Frank Tiburs, um keeps sleeping. <laughs> and and some, some snoring emojis there. JMF, usual crap. But I bet he reads you and watches you every single week. I guarantee you that much. Um, Joe Anthony went into more detail, which is fair enough. I appreciate that, Joe Anthony. Are you serious, Michael Singh, 94? LOL. TFC have one of the biggest PRs in MLS. Of course, they should be winning something in the next five years. If they don't, it's an embarrassment. This year, Montreal played their heart out under that coach. They are still underdogs. All right. What's your initial reaction? I mean, listen, you've been in this business for a while now. You know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> you can't be that surprised by yeah. the reaction. I think that's the thing. I'm not not surprised at all. I uh, knew I'd hit a, probably a few nerves uh, with my take yesterday. That's why it's called a, a hot take in the first place. And I guess I saw a lot of TFC backlash, which I'm a little surprised about because I'm not sure what this has to do with Toronto FC. I'm well, just... that's the issue though, right? When I found this out for, for many years now, when you, when you hammer a certain team, and you're known for representing or at least reporting on another team, mm -hmm. they always bring the other team into the equation, even though it's completely irrelevant. Yeah, that's, like you said, that's just the name of the game uh, nowadays. And yeah, TFC doesn't have much ground to stand on, and that's that's okay. Montreal's better than Toronto FC this year. I don't think that's any debate. But again, I'll stir the pot again. Look at the Eastern Conference. There's no New England. There's no Atlanta. There's no Toronto. Columbus isn't as good as they once were. It's wide open for Montreal. That's all I'm saying is they're taking advantage, credit to them, in a year in which there's not much competition in the East. And it doesn't mean they can't go on a run. It doesn't mean they might not even win MLS Cup. Mm -hmm. Who knows? The playoffs, strange things happen. And good teams, not great teams, can win championships. It, it does happen. I think that's all you're kind of alluding to here. You wrote about it on MLS.com recently, how, yeah, they, they could be a contender. Mm -hmm. It does make them a great team, though. That's all you're saying, right? Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if next season they regress back to 5th, uh, 6th, 7th in Eastern Conference, while other teams who I think are a little bit more ambitious than Montreal, they take a step up. Right, because Montreal's losing, well, one for sure, probably two key players. Yeah. And you know, getting the transfer market there as well. So, yeah, listen, this is why we do it. We love... Um, Provocative commentary. We love polarizing comments and we welcome them all the time. But I just have to bring those up just because, you know, I don't think what you said what was negative in any way. Um, it was actually quite reasonable in my mind. So even if others don't perhaps agree with that, and that's why they're fans and why it's tribal, and that's why we love sports. Um, TFC against Orlando this weekend. Uh, what is the mood around the club right now? I've covered this team in years past when they've been poor or they've missed out in playoffs, and this is the worst time of the year to cover any club. The mood just isn't great. Is that what you're getting? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, the one solace, obviously, was speaking to Jonathan Ozora yesterday. Uh, I think something that's bigger than what's going on with the team right now. Um, but overall, the mood of the group, get the sense that there are some players there that perhaps are looking forward to turning the page on on what has been I mean, you know, for some guys, their whole Toronto FC career. So we'll see kind of how the offseason plays out, but I get the sense that they're already starting to think about that, right? It's hard not to when of you're it is. at this point of the year, three games left. You have the international break around the corner, so maybe some guys are already thinking about Canada. 
it's, uh, yeah, oh, it's not, sure. a, not a fun time to cover the team. How, how can some of those players who are struggling domestically not look to Qatar mm -hmm. in a couple of months' time thinking, okay, it's going to get better pretty soon, but it's hard to motivate yourselves, you know, club-wise, I think, at this point. You wrote a great piece on Hugo Mbongay, who just signed a deal. He, he's an 18-year-old striker in the TFC Academy who's considered as one of the, if not the top prospects right now. How, how good is this kid at the moment? He's got room to grow. Um, obviously, he's 18 years old, but I think there's a lot of good starting points with Mbongay. Uh, the one thing that really differs from the, the strikers that TFC have, namely Jesus Jimenez and Iowa Canola, is Mbongay looks a lot more mobile, right? And mm -hmm. he's still a very big kid. Jaden Nelson told me you wouldn't really be able to tell he's 18 years old just by looking at him because he is a very big kid. He has a good stature, and he's... He's quality. I mean, in terms of uh, over the weekend, he played a, a or midweek, he played a gorgeous pass to Jordan Peruza, and Peruza went in a score for TFC too. Um, he has that in his toolbox, but he's also a lethal finisher. Um, he told me, you know, he really stresses that part of the game. Ralph Preso, his brother, he told me that mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, if Mbonga gets a chance, it's in the back of the net. So he has that as well. So he's really an all around striker who's mobile, is big, and hold up, and a lot of good starting points for, for Mbongi, so they're really excited about him. Still very young, of course, but there could be a spot up front as well next season as well. You know, who knows what happens with Jesus Jimenez. Um, they need to address the cap as well, right, to a certain degree, and mm -hmm. young players don't cost very much either, so that's a real key part, I think, of his future, and the short-term future anyway, at TFC in particular. But yeah, excitement on the horizon for TFC, certainly next year if not this year, but make sure you check out that article on theparley.com about Hugo Mbongay. Mike, thanks always. Enjoy your Orlando this weekend.